Hi. I got to a point where I figured I needed a room in my house dedicated to my priorities, which were changing. So this is a story of how I converted a office and sometimes music practice room in my house to a whiskey and cigar lounge. This all started because I ran out of storage space for my ever-expanding collection of bottles. I went from a kitchen cabinet to a dry sink to an old china cabinet and then finally I built some proper shelves in my whiskey room. I went through a similar chronology with cigar storage. The room I chose to turn into a whiskey, cigar, and music room was formerly where I practiced and recorded music. I also shot videos in there for my YouTube channels. As well as had a place to work from home. The first step was to clean out the room and that was no easy task. Finding a place to store everything was a considerable challenge. I had searched online to come up with ideas for color and texture. In the end, I decided to go with green walls and cherry paneling as well as cherry for accent and trim pieces. Then the first step in the actual remodel stage was to paint two of the walls above where the wainscoting would be. The remaining walls would be covered floor to ceiling with cherry panels. Then we hung cherry veneer plywood panels on the ceiling and walls. The finished cherry side of the plywood was stained prior to installation. I chose cherry because it would produce the color and ambiance I wanted. I was aiming for an old English pub or library look with lots of exposed wood, dark cherry or mahogany. I had a very clear idea of what I wanted it to look like, although I couldn't find an example of it anywhere. I had all of the molding produced at a local hardwood lumber mill. They cut various types of molding from dimension pieces of cherry stock. In all, there were seven different styles of millwork. This was also stained before installation. I'd recommend that you stain and varnish before installation as opposed to what I did, which was stain, install, and then varnish. I had to cut into the wall in two locations, one for an electronic fireplace and one for a built-in cigar humidor. I wasn't too concerned about fitting the plywood with tight spacing since all the joints would be covered with trim. I used quarter inch by three inch strips of cherry to cover the vertical joints, both in the wainscoting and the walls, as well as on the ceiling. Trim details include baseboard, chair rail, picture rail, crown molding, accent molding, as well as door and window casing. Once all of the plywood panels and molding pieces were installed, it was time to sand and varnish. I chose a marine varnish after sampling one coat of polyurethane. The varnish produces a darker, shinier surface. Plan on four coats of varnish, unless you're very experienced, and then you maybe can get by with less. For the whiskey shelves, I used 3 16 tempered glass. You can use the online capacity calculators that are common on custom glass websites. You'll find a lot of conflicting information online, so I suggest going back to basics. I spent a lot of time calculating the load that would be on the whiskey shelves and none of the online calculators would fit my situation. Then after doing a lot of engineering load calculations, it hit me. Again, back to basics. So I lined up bottles of whiskey on my kitchen countertop and decided that at most I would have nine bottles per foot of 12 inch deep shelf. And about half of my shelf space is three bottles deep and the other half is two. I have mostly 750 milliliter bottles. So in the end, I have about 238 pounds of whiskey on each eight foot shelf. 
The capacity of each shelf is over 1,200 pounds with a bracket spaced at 16 inches. I find it odd that the glass manufacturers use calculators that only give you options for a one foot spans or increments of one foot. Well, studs are 16 inches on center everywhere in the United States. So who's doing the thinking on those calculators? And yes, you definitely want to screw your brackets into studs. The bottom shelf, which serves as a bar top, is comprised of two one by six inch cherry boards attached to a three quarter inch plywood sheet. So the total thickness is one and three quarter inches. So I stained the top cherry boards to match everything else, then added a chair rail on the front and sides to provide a finished look. I wanted a glossy finish on the top, so I chose to apply epoxy in layers. It's about a quarter inch thick epoxy top coat. I decided to go with a humidor built into the wall. The humidor was custom made by Vigilant Inc. from New Hampshire. They matched a sample of stained cherry that I sent to them. I cut a hole in an exterior wall since it was the only place I felt I could put it. This is not recommended by the manufacturer, but I did consult a structural engineer and reinforce the opening to transfer the load across the top of the unit. It is rated at 350 cigars, but of course that depends on the size of the cigars and how you decide to display them. I have around 250 cigars in there now, and I could take out some of the boxes and probably get in over 300 quite easily. The humidity is controlled by a digital humidifier, and it has a circulating fan and filters to maintain a clean and humid environment for the cigars. I found it to be very stable and I add distilled water and biocide about once a month. I could and probably should devote an entire video to ventilation and smoke odor control. Since the room already had a ceiling fan in it, I replaced it with a Puro fan odor and smoke fan. This unit has six filters around the circumference that trap the smoke and odor. It also works for pollen or any airborne particles. I would estimate it removes about 90% of the odor when I smoke a cigar. I also added a fan in the window to exhaust smoke and increase airflow. However, that was not adequate since, as we know, smoke rises. I researched various smoke and odor control options and decided to add an inline fan to exhaust as much smoke as possible. It all comes down to airflow and air changes. I installed a fan that is commonly used in grow houses to maintain adequate airflow for plants to thrive. This eight inch fan, which I installed up in the attic, provides 40 air changes an hour to my cigar room and eliminates all smoke odor. So the combination of exhausting smoke and removing odor with the Puro fan results in a room that does not have any lingering smoke odor. So there you have it. It took about a month to complete the construction and then another month or so experimenting and adding finishing touches. For me, it was well worth it. The first time I smoked a cigar in there was a real satisfying moment. Now it's a daily routine and I get no complaints from the rest of the house. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I may do a detailed video on the airflow issues. Let me know if that is of interest to you. Thank you.